Hello lovely people, how are you all today? I do hope you're well. It's a dry day, yay, we're not getting many. Oh my goodness, it's humid again as that moisture is being evaporated out of the ground. Lovely day though, it's peaceful. I'm taking this opportunity to make a video that a few folk have been asking me to make. I made a similar one two years ago I think, but in the meantime um, there are lots of new subscribers who joined. Hello and thank you to you all. So today <laughs> the title of this video is How Big Are Your Beds? and other frequently asked questions. So the purpose of this video today I'm going to walk you around as well. I'm just going to orientate you about how my plot sits within this site, a few little measurements and things on my plot, how this site works as a whole, etc, etc. And, and I've got scraps of paper because I've got my measurements, because I'm in metres, but I've tried to convert everything into, have I done it all? Yeah, into square feet. Um, yeah, for those who are still in Imperial. So, um, from the offset, this is an allotment site. It isn't a leisure garden, it isn't a community garden. Allotments are specifically, although some of them are changing a little bit, but they're specifically about um, areas of land, how to put it, on which people can grow food. Most allotment sites are owned by the local council. Some of them are owned by the local parish, so owned by the church. Some are owned by a charity. But essentially, it's an area of land that someone owns and they let small pockets of it, an allotted amount of space, an allotted amount, an allotment amount of space to an individual who pays rent for the year to work the land. Uh, all sites will vary to some degree or other but they'll all have one thing in common that we all pay rent to have that piece of land. In my rent also included in that is um, water so you know we have our water dip tanks. I'm going to show you and explain as we're out and about but yeah so my rent includes water too some councils, some allotment sites don't have water. Um, I'm so glad we do, although this year we don't need it. So I pay my rent each year. The money goes to the council. However, slightly differently, we are a self-managed site. So over the years, things have been managed well and the council say, you know what? you're doing things great, we don't need to interfere, we just collect the rent, but you can manage yourselves. So as part of that we have a committee made up of about, I think about eight different plot holders, maybe ten. It's good to have a good number of people because then obviously you're getting different opinions and um, if anything major is, if there's a major decision to make it's actually put to all of us. So that's really good. But yeah, the, the committee are there to sort of just, you know, steer things, make sure things are going the right way. Um, part of that is to make sure we're adhering to the rules. There's a great long list of rules. But, you know, they're all very sensible and basic things. So, for example, uh, part of our rule is that your plot is after you've been here for one year you're expected to have at least 70% of your plot cultivated within that first year and then ongoing you are supposed to be 100% cultivated doesn't always happen um, simple things like trees you can plant a tree but it mustn't get to more than six feet so people choose to have dwarf rooting stock fruit trees people espalier their trees so they go so actually the tree might be more like eight or nine feet but because it's at an angle it never goes above six feet we're not allowed to have any structures actually on our plots um, which is great because that means no one can build a shed on their plot and that casts shadow onto another plot which would mean you know 
poorer growing conditions for someone else. So no buildings within the actual plot itself. The way the site is laid out, all around the perimeter, I'm sitting in mine, we have our sheds and greenhouses. So every plot is allocated a footprint that's about, I guess it's about 12 foot by 12 foot. And it's up to the individual. They can either have a shed on that footprint or they can have a greenhouse. I chose to have a shed because I don't live that close to the garden. I don't drive, etc, etc. So I don't want to be bringing my tools backwards and forwards each time. Plus no storage at home. So yeah, I opted for a shed because that seemed more practical to me. Somewhere to store all my pots and trays. Somewhere to shelter during a shower. Somewhere to just come and sit and relax during a busy day. So yes, we've got our little properties, <laughs> our buildings right at the perimeters of the whole site. Great, keeps shade off everyone's plots. The old school plot allocation used to be measured in rods and a plot would be 10 rods. That was your standard plot. On our site, all the plots are five rods. So my plot is actually a half plot, but they're all half plots. By doing that, that's great. That means that we have 60 plots instead of 30. More people get a chance to grow. Now I think, I think probably what's best to do, why don't we go right back to the gate where I come in. We can walk through and I can I can sort of explain that layout a bit better then are you off rusty busty eh oh and then um explain my plot the size and also <laughs> you wobble then rusty you're getting fat oh i just got a waft of cat breath fishy cat breath um and also the orientation in terms of my plot and my shed because i think folk get confused when i'm sitting outside the shed I'm not actually on my plot at that stage. My plot's at the top, the shed's on the perimeter. So without further ado, come on, let's go to the gate and let me orientate you to my gorgeous little oasis, my beautiful little green patch in the middle of London. Right then, this is where I come in to the plot. Um, I'm near the gate, we've got a whole mound of rubbish here. We are going to be hiring a skip soon. Unfortunately, people do bring, create, whatever, a lot of rubbish. This has all been sorted through, there's nothing of any use here, so yeah, we're going to dump it. Never mind that. So we also, oh, <laughs> we also have to, I don't know who brought the shopping trolley, but we have a little table here, and this is where we share produce pots that was piled high with pots and trays the other day so we can leave things here and if they're left on this table it means please help yourself fab someone's left a pallet i'm sure that will be snapped up very soon so this is how i come in this building on the left i know that a lot of you will know this already but for those who don't this is our composting loo system it's great it's great to have the loo facility I personally don't use it because I use a bucket in my shed because <laughs> it makes good fertiliser. But it's really useful to have, especially for sort of, you know, anyone who's maybe <laughs> even more wobbly on their legs than me who can't squat in the shed. So in terms of facilities that we've got, we've got our loo, we've got a couple of communal sheds. One is a small one that we keep just a few very basic hand tools in that are for sharing for anyone to use when they're just beginning and don't have tools seeds seed sharing that sort of thing and then another much bigger one which is our kitchen dining facilities and that's where we're building the pagoda outside but yeah composting loo works very simply big wheelie bins under here the seat of the loo is actually up here hence the stairs climbing up and any of you who were watching a couple of years ago will see Kay and I built this new platform because the old one had rotten. <laughs> it's all a bit Heath Robinson cobbled together, but it's 
good and sturdy now. You know what? We did a good job on that. Proud of that bit of work. So, coming on site. I always love this moment of walking in and, oh, greeted by the green. Now, this area, this used to be what was called the burn pile. So this would be where people would put any rubbish, sort of wood, any really thick, you know, sort of trimmings from fruit trees, that sort of thing. And then every year, 5th of November, we'd have a bonfire. However, we've decided collectively we don't want to have fires anymore. You know, we should not be burning waste. Um, that sort of stuff should be buried to decompose in the ground or be used to make log piles for insects etc I, I completely agree with that decision the only thing it does mean is <laughs> I used to get a lot of good stuff good pickings out of here never mind so I come in along my little path let's scoot down here oops I'll try and speed my way along to here so I'm going to come to the central path. This is just a bit of a side path. This lovely bench on the left is a memorial bench for one of the old boys who we all dearly, dearly love. Duh. Well, we still love him, so that's Paddy's bench. Now, let me swing you around. You have seen this view before. This is the central path. It runs all the way down to that big tree at the end. And then we have a bit of a dog leg and we go further into that corner where the orchard is. But this is the main part of the site. And the way it's laid out, we have this central path and then going off the central path, either side, there are one and then two plots around the perimeter you can just make out there you can see sheds greenhouses what have you so for instance a shed that shed will belong to this plot that greenhouse belongs to the back plot it's very simple very civilized no arguments also on this central path oh sorry i should have just said as well where we've got a plot here, it ends where the yellow hoops are. There's a little path that runs down between them. That's the equivalent on my plot of where I've got my fence and deck before the next plot. There are some water tanks there along that whole line, but the majority of them are here on the central path. So these are our dip tanks. They just work on a ball cock mechanism that one needs to have the weed hoiked out and they're dotted all the way down dink, 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 on a zigzag down this central path so that everyone has fairly fairly close access to water just explaining this layout a bit further i'll show you on gary's plot Gary is here. Well, Gary himself isn't here at the moment, but on his plot. So each, each of the plots is then, we then have these paths that run from the central path down to the back path where all the sheds are. So for example, here's our Gary's plot, all looking lovely. And then where that greenery is, it ends there. There's another plot behind that. I think they're here today, so I won't go and disturb. There's another plot behind it, but that down there, that's Gary's shed. So yeah, each side of the path, one plot, two plot, perimeter for sheds, etc. Oh, it's humid today. I'm sweating just walking. It's ridiculous. Um, this plot has been given up. So hopefully we'll get a new plot holder soon. Part of the community aspect of, of having these allotments is that once a month we have a work party day 
where we do a communal effort to do various jobs and one of them will be we'll cut all of this back because it's it's going to start seeding into another plot and that's not fair coming along <laughs> One of my friends is out trimming. Let's not get her. She might not. She might not be feeling like being on camp. Can we say hello? No. no. <laughs> there's some. Um, so there's some cutting back going on. <laughs> I won't show you the sweaty face that's doing it. That honestly, it's so muggy today. Good work, lovely. Keep oh. it up. But have have regular sit downs and cups of tea or water or something. So as we, we keep coming down the central path um, and we see my plot emerging on the left. I've shown you Catherine's plot a few times. So again, did you see where all her bird, ooh, here, all her bird feed is and that. This is all um, espaliered fruit trees. That lot needs a trim. That's not on her plot. That's the plot behind. So in terms of orientation to my plot, here we are. Here's my little plot. Again, we have the paths that go all the way to the perimeter, both sides. So all plots have, should have <laughs> these nice neat paths going to the perimeter. So remember what I was saying about this is a half plot. Once upon a time, this plot would have gone all the way back to the shed. But in order to get more people growing and more people on here, we have half plots, so this is my half plot, it comes all the way to my fence. So this fence marks the boundary of my plot, then behind it, remember what I was saying about we have the little paths behind? And this one needs some attention. It's gotten very weedy again. So we've done this in wood chip. Some of the paths, I'll show you this one swinging around. Some of them are grass. The path here should continue, but it does a bit of a dog leg. Oh. And then, so let me just bring you back here because this is an orientation day. So, my whole garden, central path, my plot finishes here, but then you see my neighbour's plot here, my shed, my neighbour's shed. So this shed belongs to this plot, this shed belongs to my plot. Likewise, you can't see because this plot's been given up and we're waiting for a new tenant, but behind those trees there's a shed here for my neighbours on this plot and then next door to it there's another shed and that's for this plot. In terms of building a shed, oh do you know what let's go back in the shed a second because I think it's such a muggy day I'd like a glass of water and then we'll come back out and I'm going to talk measurements because that's actually it seems to be the thing that everybody wants to know. Oh look my little home sweet home. So I'm just reaching for my water. So in terms of the actual sheds or greenhouses, um, when you take on a plot, it's quite possible that you'll inherit the shed. Um, I inherited a shed when I took this plot on. It was rotten, absolutely rotten. I put up with it for four or five years as best I could. And I probably would have kept putting up with it for a bit longer, but I mean, it was really rotten, and then I got a tax refund. Um, it was while I was still working. Sorry, it's just nozzle. There's cat hairs in here. So I decided to invest in a new shed. What style of shed do you have? It, anything goes. You can do whatever you want when it comes to the style of shed. It's just that you have to stick with that. Like I said, I think it's about 12 foot by 12 foot footprint. Otherwise, yeah, do what you want. I mean, don't. I don't think we could have a two-storey shed. I don't think that would be <laughs> okay, not at all. Right, so I put my notes down in terms of size. So, uh, 
let's get back out there. I hope that's helped actually just showing where my plot ends and the fact that there is another plot before the shed because quite often when I'm sitting outside the shed if I've got the camera in the shed pointing out for instance you saw the lovely poppies that's not my plot <laughs> it's not my plot it's not my plot right before I start getting into tunes that I'll have to uh, pay copyright for let's go and talk about measurements okay so I think you're all familiar now, by now with the the idea that I've got these four main beds one two three four plus the little extra not as big bed for my herbs and then obviously the deck area so each of these main growing beds I call this bed number four the one at the top I call it number one so each of these four main beds is about hang on a second three and a half meters this way and about six meters is the width of my entire plot so in feet that's about 11 and a half by 19 and a half uh, so square footage it's about 215 square feet per bed or 20 square meters so with my four main veg beds that gives me a total of about 80 square meters of growing space in feet that is <laughs> look at me i'm reading from my crib sheet i can't remember these numbers in feet yeah it's about 860 square feet in total and then there's about another with the herb bed cold frame the deco it's probably about another 20 square meters or so but like i said the main the main bulk of my growing is done in these 80 square meters or 860 square feet and I know some folk think that's huge <laughs> um, I mean it's big in terms of the work <laughs> for one but it's actually not that big a space for you know trying to live for a whole year from which is why I do tend to cram my veggies in. In terms of the mini beds within, so within, hang on, where am I going to tuck this piece of paper? I'm going to tuck it in my bra strap. Hang on. Oh my goodness, needs must. So, as I was saying, this is six metres. This is approximately three and a half metres, which means the five five four three two one mini beds within the main bed these are three and a half meters long by about a meter wide about i didn't actually measure them i just did it by eye for you know how much i can fit in as in visualizing four rows of onions for example so that gives me 20 Growing beds of three and a half metres by metre. Sorry, I forgot to put that into feet and inches for feet and inches, folk. But you know what? It just about does me. Also, I've mentioned a few times, but I'll just reiterate today. This side of the garden, this is south. Over there is north. So this is east. That's west. So my... my how to do it my sunshine starts here in the morning shine shine sun moves around 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 so for the most of the day the sun is coming beaming this way by the evening which is why my shed is in shade by the late afternoon it's here so i generally orientate the plants so that i've got smaller things in these front beds taller things at the back but actually, I get pretty good light on this plot all day. So it's never really been an issue. And it's back to this thing about structures not having... We are allowed structures on the plot. Obviously, I've got my cold frame. But no structure within the actual plot is allowed to be taller than four feet high. That's great. So there's no, there's no impedance 
from any direction for me getting good sunshine on my veggies. Obviously, you know, my neighbour's hedge is there, but that's putting shade onto his pot, not mine. So that's absolutely fine. Yay! So there we have it. Let's go down to the path. So in terms of I was mentioning the rules and things, they're really very simple and straightforward and, and it's for everyone's benefit. So this will need to be tackled. For instance, don't have overhanging branches over the paths. This I will be cutting back soon because I'm always getting scratched by it. Um, yeah, so the rules, rules are simple. These side paths, the individual pot holder, it's up to them to maintain. So me and my neighbour to maintain this. And then looking back at our central path, this is maintained by us all during our working party days. So, you know, some of the paths, they get in a bit of a tatty condition and someone might get a reminder <laughs> to look after their path. Oh, and with the water dip tanks, if you remember, and I'm loving it, I was mentioning how sometimes on the middle path, these back middle paths, so the path behind my fence, we have the occasional dip tank too. Yay! So as part of my maintenance, oh, I took all my Nigella out the other day. Oh, they're gorgeous. I didn't want them going everywhere. So as I now move into sort of maintenance time, I'll turn my attention to this. Get these weeds out. There's some bindweed appearing. That all needs to come out. But that can be done. So yeah. Very, very back end of my plot. All the way back to the top. So I hope, I hope that answers folks' questions. I think the main one that I get all the time is how big are your beds? And I think one of the reasons folk ask that, I un completely understand this, is they're trying to visualise, say, the amount of plants I plant into my beds how would that work in their own garden? So, yeah, hope that helps. Just before I turn this off, well, I'll double check my little crib sheet with questions. Let me show you what's happening in the Rouge Rift de Pompe. Hello. Hello, you beauty. Yay! <laughs> That's very happy making. Wow, it's a steamy day. Steamy, steamy, steamy. Phew, I'm shocked how humid it is today. It really is, um, bleh. That's fine because I'm only going to do some really little jobs today, tying in cucumbers, tying in squash, that sort of thing. But never mind that. I hope, um, I hope that answered yeah, like I say, it's the most frequently asked question is how big are your beds? Oh, and the other one I get asked about so often, the cats. So you'll have all seen from time to time Rusty, the marmalade, uh, Poppy, the gorgeous little tricolour, she's such a sweetheart, Rosie, the little black and white, uh, you'll have seen by now Monroe, Kay's cat and Coco Bean, her other cat. There are tons of cats, tons of cats that come to visit and have some cuddles, but mainly you will see Rusty and Poppy. No, they're not my cats. No, they're not wild. They all live in the houses around the allotment site and they treat the allotment as their, it's their home, it's their playground. So yeah, they wander over, they have a cuddle. I sometimes give them a few nibbles. Uh, it's okay, I know the owners, I know about dietary requirements with all these cats. I don't, I'm not feeding them as such and none of them are on sort of special diets, the ones you see. So yeah, it's all good. They just, they just wander around and lap up the love where they can get it. And if they're not getting enough attention, they wander off and they wander to another shed and get attention there. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're a joy to have around. They're always around. 
absolute sweethearts. So there we go. Hopefully that's covered things. If not, if you have other questions, pop them in the comments below. Um, I always answer, you know I do by now. So yeah, hopefully that's covered things. I did mention the other day when I was, ta <laughs> when I was talking about that hoe coming through my letterbox, good grief. I am going to do a couple of videos. I plan to do them in the winter. Uh, I don't know what happened. What happened? What happened this year? It's gone. Half of it's gone. Um, I'm planning to do, and it may be in two or even three parts because I don't want them to be too long. I'm going to do a video about tools and equipment and kit. All the clobber I use to create my kitchen garden every year, to create my food for the year. So we'll do that. I think we might do that soon as we go into this slightly more relaxed um, time in the garden. I shouldn't have said that, should I? It's all going to kick off again soon. But anyway, yeah, we'll do that another day. So for now, I'm going to say cheerio to you all. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me. I uh, hope that's kind of helped to, to sort of put my plot into perspective within the site and yeah, just orientate you a bit. And also the main thing, like I said, is, is talking about the size of beds. That will help you to sort of picture if you can do something similar in your garden or if you can go even bigger, if you can, lucky you. All right, lovelies, until next time, please look after yourselves, look after each other, look after your gardens, look after the cats that come a-visiting, um, be happy, get on with things, chill out, don't get on with things, whatever you want to do, do it. See you soon. Bye for now.